Senator Susan Kent was elected also in 2012, began service in the Senate in 2013. She served, has served 10 years in the Senate. Her total legis legislative days are 3,422. It's my honor to present Senator Susan Kent. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, colleagues, friends. Uh, Senator Coran, I'm probably gonna speak more than the 30 seconds that you allotted, but a lot less than 20 minutes. Um, it's funny, I, Senator Clausen actually stole an awful lot of what I was gonna say in terms of that first day that our class was here. I really think I sat in one of these two seats, actually. And uh, the reflections on Daniel Webster uh, I share and the gratitude for this class that we started with because I think the class of 2012 was pretty impressive and has been. Um, I will say, and I did tell Senator Putman that I am likely to cry, but um, uh, something that he and I have talked about as we've been in here in some of the longer days, maybe it's time to update Daniel Webster and one that I came up with was that didn't have to take so long. but. <laughs> anyway, um, as I think back to that day and how overwhelming it was and how much I knew I had to learn and how much I knew I, I didn't even know I had to learn, I am grateful and humbled uh, beyond description for these past 10 years. This day comes with a lot of complicated feelings. Um, I made the choice not to run for a lot of important and good reasons, some that have really borne out to be even more prescient than I realized at the time. But this is bittersweet because I really care so deeply for this place and the work we do, and it has been my real privilege uh, as a native New Orleanian um, who made my way up the Great River to this other end of it. I describe it as a gumbo of emotions. <laughs> um, but as I've said on this floor more than a few times, I am a glass half full kind of a person, and on this particular day, I am really focusing on the gratitude. I want to start with specific appreciation for the incredible people we work with, and others have addressed this, those who are behind all the work that gets done here for the people of Minnesota. Uh, in my previous life, I had the, the opportunity to work with some really amazing, highly respected national companies and work with the people who worked in, in those organizations. But when I got here, my breath was taken away by the staff in the Minnesota Senate of all areas. Nonpartisan and partisan, such excellence. Smart, talented, and incredibly dedicated. And I just wish that the people of Minnesota could get a little glimpse of how lucky they are to be represented by the work done by the people in the Senate. Now I'm gonna blame Carla Bigham for this. <laughs> uh. I am grateful to all. I should start with the advocates and the stakeholders and the lobbyists who push us every day to do our work and do it well and keep us on our toes. Um, here in the Senate, from our front desk, the sergeants, the troopers, the pages, the interns, you make it work, not to mention CIS and HR and media and the departments. People forget this is an organization like any other organization and we gotta keep the lights running and make sure we're doing it right. Council, fiscal oil, and our analysts are incredible. All our LAs, CAs, research communications, leadership staff in both caucuses. And I want to specifically thank a short list of those with whom I've had the privilege of working most closely over these years. Uh, in Senate Council and Research, Anne Marie Lewis, Bjorn Arneson, Bonnie Berezovsky, Krista Boyd, Lexi Stangle, Tom Bodden, and Eric Nauman. Our research and media teams in the DFL caucus, Dana Elling, Ryan Majerus, Craig Janicich, Charlie Bruce, Skylar Hilt, Vilt, Amelia Hennis, and Shannon Hunter. The leadership team that I had the privilege of serving with, Steve Peterson, Selena Coster, Krista Broughton, Chris Runquist, Shelley Schaefer, and John Pollard. And last, and most importantly, in 10 years, I've had three LAs, um, and only two in the first nine of those. And I wanna thank Gwenya Fiskevold Gould, Isaac Russell, and Diana Rico, who was here with me today. Thank you. Um, 
that partnership and that commitment and that working together is something that will be with me forever. The work that we do is why we're here. And for me, I was driven by our kids. First and foremost, education, making sure every kid gets a great opportunity at a good start. But that's true for every Minnesotan. They all deserve uh, great opportunities. Um, one of the things that, as a, someone who was born and raised in Louisiana and lived for a lot of years in the state of Texas, and I chose to come to Minnesota. And I knew Minnesota was a great place because my husband was from here and I'd been here a bunch of times and his family was here and many friends. But until I came to serve in the Minnesota Senate, I did not appreciate how well we do things in the, Minnesota, in the state of Minnesota. And we need to cherish that and protect that. Uh, as Paul Wellstone said, politics is about the improvement of people's lives. And I know that whatever side of the aisle we're, any of us are on, we all are here for that reason. A few other thoughts as we are here um, on what, I don't know, may or may not be our last day on this floor for some of us. Um, I think about who I hear from in my district, but I also think about who I don't hear from. And obviously, squeaky wheels tend to get the grease. But I think we have an obligation to keep in mind those we are not hearing from, either because they gave up on us because we're not in their party or because they're not as active, because they're not as motivated by some of the issues, or maybe they're just working really hard and raising kids and they've got stuff going on in their lives or they don't know how to connect. But I think we have an obligation and a responsibility to make sure that we stay attuned to that. And I think about some of the debates we have and what it's like to be in this role and what we face uh, as we make tough decisions and speak out on certain issues and, and, and talk about things, there are a lot of activists in this state who uh, may fuel us or motivate us in an opposite direction, I'm not sure. Anybody, frankly, can be an activist in theory, but there are only 201 of us who have these buttons in front of us, who have the privilege of actually writing the legislation, of doing the work to finding the solution and to improving people's lives. And I think it's important that we remember that we are in a very special place here in the state of Minnesota and we have a special obligation that is different than just giving a great speech. We have to think it through and stop and breathe and work together because that is the only way a legislature gets things done. My former colleague and House member Joanne Ward and I always said it is a team sport. And last but not least on this, I would say, I've talked about my, some, several years ago, a number of years ago, it occurred to me, and to me this is a, 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 a sense of the awesomeness of this and also the humility. I see the legislature as a river, a river that flows a river that has been flowing long before I jumped in and paddled and navigated it the best I could, and now I'm gonna get out, and boy, that river's gonna keep going without me. And it's important that we recognize our role in this matters, but it is so much bigger than just us. So I'll wrap up with a little more gratitude on a personal note. I wanna express my deep appreciation for my community. And it is an interesting community because there is so much diversity within it, from Woodbury to Landfall, Maplewood and Oakdale. I am humbled and profoundly grateful for the privilege to serve. I have tried to listen and to be a public servant in that, the true meaning of that word. And your stories that you have graciously shared with me will stay with me always. I want to thank my family and friends, and I'm not going to try to name them because I'll leave people out and that's not okay, but they've had my back, they've understood when I've ignored them for like weeks on end, and then happy to get back together. But they, they are with me and I'm there with me today. My husband, Chris, has supported me on all of my adventures and very much on this one, although his first reaction to the idea was not exactly um, positive, but he warmed up real fast. <laughs> um, he just retired two weeks ago after working for 3M for 39 years. And um, uh, now it's his turn, and I want to be there for him. Uh, 
We, I celebrated our 25th anniversary in the House Chamber for the State of the State <laughs> in 2013. Uh, next year will be our 35th anniversary, and we will get to go someplace warm in February. Our son, Andrew, who it is hard to believe, I said this to Greg Claussen just the other day, he was 11 when we started and he's now 21. Um, it has not been easy for him to share me, but I appreciate his uh, patience and tolerance and support. He's been a big help. And I wanna thank him for keeping me laughing and keeping me focused. And because ultimately it is our kids and their future that has always inspired me. Generations before us sacrificed for us and our success. They invested in the state that works for us now, and we need to do the same. It's our turn. Um, my work is not done. Lots of people keep asking me what I'm gonna do next, and I keep saying I've been waiting for session to end so I'd have a little time to think about it, and uh, I will take that time, but uh, I will still be engaged in some form or fashion. And finally, I wanna thank all of you, my colleagues. Um, it has been a privilege getting to know you, to work with you, and uh, ultimately to become friends. So thank you all very much.